there are some who say, we are divided, north and south. We know better. We are one city, unified. And if we are all to prosper, Southern Dallas must be part of that prosperity. There's a history, there's a legacy, there's an innate sense of community pride. The bones are great, the character is there, it just needs some improvements. Working in Southern Dallas, I have found some of the most vibrant and beautiful and untold stories I've ever heard. I've been a part of uh, this community for over 20 years now, and I believe there is a physical uh, separation, but I believe that the hearts and the minds of, of our community speak otherwise. Grow South means action to strengthen neighborhoods. Um, we have the highest rate of child poverty in the country. Um, there's pockets that have very high unemployment. Um, transportation is a big issue right now. Economic development, food access. We have a, any number of initiatives that we work on. Of course, the AmeriCorps VISTAs are a big part of that. Right now, our VISTAs are embedded in roughly 32 neighborhoods across southern Dallas. And so a lot of what they do is to try to be that empowering mechanism. If I live in a neighborhood and I want it to be different, uh, I have to be a part of that. I have to be a part of that change. The South Dallas Fair Park Public Improvement District is a special assessment district in South Dallas Fair Park. This is the first PID south of I-30. Our zip code 75215 is the most impoverished zip code in Dallas County. And our main goal is to have a safe and secure community. The landowners in our district, which is 630 properties, they pay an extra 15 cents on every $100 tax assessed value. To actually have a extra security patrol, a hire the homeless program, and uh, it's going really well. We began to walk uh, the area of Camp Wisdom, uh, talking with the businesses and churches. Everybody started coming together. We found that there were people who had, had a willing to, willingness to work and come together. They just didn't know what they could do. We, we were limited because we get caught up with what people say we can do instead of like the mayor's rhythm is what we can do once we all come together. It's a great opportunity for developers to come over here. There's some money to be made over here. There businesses, people, the community wants it to be done. Uh, and, and we're here to make sure we can do what we can to make it happen. Business of home come, let's say, feel safe. And so out of that, that's when uh, A.P. Martin would tell the story about what happened there. So this is the Redbird Outreach Center. We came into the community where we had a, a crime problem. Um, but now the crime problem has significantly been reduced. Well, because this unit has been over here, they have a relationship with the community and with the kids in the apartment complexes. And because of that relationship, that has changed the persona of some of the kids where they say, I respect police officers, I'm not afraid of a police officer, I will go to a police officer if I'm in trouble. In fact, when we talk to Curtis, Curtis has this company where he makes sure that people that are unemployed in the area have the ability to get jobs. But getting jobs wasn't enough. One of the issues that a lot of people weren't able to get jobs because of transportation. So we came aboard and began to provide that transportation so there was no longer an excuse. We began picking up people uh, from the Ledbetter Station and from the Workforce Commission, taking them to jobs as far away as Ennis, Fort Worth, and McKinney. And as of August of uh, 2016, we've gotten over 300 something people jobs because of transportation. We're starting at the grassroots level, and that's by the neighborhood perceptions of the community members themselves directly. We're trying to make them have pride in their neighborhoods, showcase their neighborhoods, either through branding and signage by way of sign toppers and renaming of neighborhoods that didn't previously have names, and building that sense of grassroots pride through the homeowners and those that live in those areas so that that can then bubble out.
in the education corridor. We've seen some of the stakeholders in the area come together around some really common themes, um, really focused on how can we tackle behavioral health. Uh, we have seen a lot of progress with DART. A few weeks ago, City Council approved the Wheatland Road infrastructure. So essentially what that means is water and sewage will now be put into the University Hills area, making that land available for development. And they will be replacing Wheatland Road, which is an old country road. That will be breaking ground at the end of June, so we're really excited. Grow South promotes a safe and clean Southern Dallas. Southern Dallas for decades has been plagued by a scourge of loose dogs. We've made an enormous amount of progress since last year. Uh, just to bring you back to where we were a year ago, this is right around the time when Antoinette Brown was attacked by a pack of dogs and killed. In the ensuing year, we have uh, hired a first-class consulting firm, BCG, to do a full study of the problem and come up with strategic recommendations. And we have now uh, been implementing those recommendations for more than six months. Those recommendations included uh, techniques for how to pick up more dogs off the street. Dallas Animal Services is picking up thousands more dogs, and yet it is euthanizing thousands fewer dogs we have a live release rate now of over 80%. And so we've now raised $13.5 million out of a total $25 million need to execute a free spay-neuter surge in which we will spay or neuter about 150,000 dogs for free. And we think that will finally get us ahead of the birth, uh, the birth rate curve and we will see substantial and permanent declines in the number of dogs running free around the city. One of the initiatives as part of Grow South is what we call the High Impact Landlord Initiative. And that's a process where we began a couple of years ago actually identifying those property owners in Southern Dallas who have single family rental properties in the area. But what was most important for us to look at was the Dallas Central Appraisal District's CDU rating, which is the condition, desirability, and usefulness of the property. We looked at properties that were rated either poor, very poor, or unsound to determine what our biggest impact properties were. That narrowed it down to eight high impact landlords, as we called them, who owned 40 or more properties, of which at least half were in poor or worse condition. That became the group that we began working with. So for the first time, we're not only registering those rental properties, we're inspecting them at least once every five years. So we will go into the interior of the properties for the first time and you know, compel the owner to come into compliance with the minimum property standards. Talking about no exceptions. We must strengthen our schools and build possibilities for the next generation. Kids are needing a pathway of learning experiences that continue after the school year's over. Certain families who are under-resourced are getting actually a learning slide that happens um, in math and reading where they're behind learning when the school year starts. Families are really thirsting for information. Um, we had an event in partnership with Dallas ISD, and the city and the mayor was there, and there were over 4,500 families there in line looking for the resources for summer, finding out what limited or free activities are available, which there are many, and really signing up um, opportunities for their little ones, their middle schooler, and even their high schooler that would keep that learning continued on even after the school year in Parkdale and Urbandale. We know that having a healthy lifestyle is very important. And there's a lot of information that families don't always get. Healthy communities, healthy schools is more than a health fair. We have several partners that are sharing information bilingually in English and Spanish with the Southeastern community. Education is really the foundation of our future workforce and Mayor Rollins supports three historical initiatives. 
The Mayor's Summer Reading Challenge encourages year-round reading and improves literacy. Last year, children and their families read over 289,000 hours. The Mayor's Back to School Fair is Dallas's largest back to school fair. We have 40,000 children and families that come to Fair Park in August and the fair provides free school supplies and backpacks to families in need and also gives important health services. It really is a one-stop shop for families to get what they need for their children so that they are equipped and ready to learn that first day of school. The Mayor's Intern Fellows Program provides eight-week paid internships for high school students to work at area businesses and nonprofits. We have many interns that will work throughout the summer and they do such a fantastic job that the employers keep them on during the school year and on through college and then some of them even come back and work for the company full time and have a career with them. The Collegiate Academy Initiative is a wonderful collaboration between the Dallas Independent School District and the Dallas County Community College District. This past year, uh, we expanded that opportunity to eight high schools. We've also been launching Cohort 2, which is an additional 10 collegiate academies. Uh, one of the things we see coming up is the expansion of the program in future years and really giving the opportunity to all students who want to go to college to be able to go to college. Most of the students that have applied are first-generation college-going students. So this is uh, not only a game changer for students and their families, this is a life changer. I'm from South Dallas. I grew up in South Dallas. I was born in South Dallas. So that's pretty much what led me to scholarship. I always wanted to go to college, but we just never had the money. My mom is disabled. She's um, bipolar schizophrenic, so she's unable to work. And I've always wondered, how am I going to go to college? You know, I knew I had to go, but I didn't know how I was going to go. And I started researching, and I found Scholarshot. <laughs> Scholarshot has one focus, which is to help at-risk students complete college degrees not only a financial support in the form of three to six thousand dollars a year per student but also a tremendous amount of hands-on academic and personal guidance. You're never alone. They call me once a month and they make sure that I'm doing okay, that their services are enough for me and whatever else I could need, how could they help me. They just, they do so much for me. I have yet to receive a loan and I'm going on my junior year. So. That's a lot right there. <laughs> Improving life and possibilities in Southern Dallas requires creative ways to find money. The access to capital was a serious problem within Southern Dallas. Whenever you went south of the Trinity, uh, you would find a disparity in terms of the amounts that commercial real estate developers could borrow from banks. So we felt there was a need for a, a debt fund that would bridge that gap. We have close to $40 million of uh, funds that have been invested in the Grow South Fund. The first investment is in Redbird Mall. Funding will definitely produce the, the faster rehabilitation of the mall and hopefully more tenants there. It will be able to help produce um, uh, some multifamily rental units that will be available for people that live in Southern Dallas. And lastly, uh, there is plans for a hotel in the area so uh, that will help spur the development of that hotel as well. Making Southern Dallas part of a unified Dallas requires separating truth from myth. Myth number one, that there are no arts and culture in Southern Dallas. Sitting on the Grow South Advisory Council, it was really clear to me that art and art equity was not happening for all of the citizens of Dallas. And so we launched Grow South Arts, and right now we're focused on bringing an art center, a cultural center, to the Red Bird Shopping Center. 
Redbird Mall really stood out as a perfect opportunity, and our team gave special consideration to projects and artists that were thinking of doing things in the Growth South zip codes. Over Arts Month, we did four weekends at Redbird Mall with the Super Fantasy Mercado, where local artists sold their art. And then this summer, Big Thought's going to be having the Redbird Soars summer camps. Arts really are adding to the vibrancy of neighborhoods that already have so much to offer. And so Redbird is really our first concerted effort. Number two, that there is no middle class housing. When you look at areas that are economically disadvantaged, that's the objective of our committee is to produce this for sale housing in these uh, areas of Southern Dallas. Hamden Homes does a rent to own um, type of program, so um, you know they get people into the houses, but then uh, teach them how to work on credit so that they can uh, go ahead and make that home purchase, um, you know, down the road after they moved in. The activities really picked up. Then you know the mayor set a goal uh, for us to go in with uh, 1,500 uh, houses. Uh, we're going to blow past that. We should probably target 2,000. It may end up being um, over 2,500 houses. The city is um, really focusing on how to clear obstacles so that developers and builders can move more quickly. There is a streamlining process that is going on within the city uh, to help push uh, these developments forward. Myth number three, that there are no second chances. The city and county worked together to help ex-offenders get clean records and find jobs. You all woke up today and you were tethered to something that happened, a mistake in the past. But when you go to bed tonight, as soon as you leave here, that tether is gone, it's broken. And you can go out and be untethered. You can go out and be free, free from a mistake. You can go out and make a better life for yourself because of the work of so many of these good folks. Myth number four, that there are no job opportunities in Southern Dallas. We know that there's a lot of development coming with the redevelopment of Redbird Mall. What we've done is gone out to the apartment complexes where we know there are lower income families and basically offered the job training and the job skills and the job opportunities to them. In the past, we've tried to do job fairs where we set it at a central location and have people come to us and we realize that that's not successful, so we're taking the jobs to the people. This is very important today. 30 employers are showing up, 2,300 kids. For the next full year, we will be holding more of these events to see that young people do find their way. I think what we're doing here today is just creating opportunity. The only way that the promise of America and the American dream can be sustainable and alive and not an illusion is if it's, if it's for everyone. And that's what today is about. There's so many young people in our community here in DFW who don't have jobs, who aren't in school, and we have a wealth of opportunities to join one of the FedEx operating companies. I asked pastors all over southern Dallas, I said, what do we need? What do you have to have? What should I do? Time and time again, they say one thing, get these kids jobs. It's been a lot of negative light over the years through the media, but I think we're changing that perception. I believe Southern Dallas is Dallas's key to opportunity. If we are all to prosper, Southern Dallas must be part of that prosperity.